In the last lesson, we learned that we can estimate the parameters, uh, beta, that show up in the linear predictor using maximum likelihood. And the likelihood was constructed using the canonical link function, the log link. And th that's what's shown here. So we set the linear predictor equal to the log of the mean of the distribution. And the mean of the Poisson distribution is the rate parameter lambda. And in this lesson, we'll learn how to interpret the Poisson regression model with the log link function. So again, a virtue of a lot of statistical models uh, is that they have a straightforward and relatively clear interpretation, and that's helpful in explaining the relationship that you see between predictor values and response values. Based on our log link function, we can see that if we want just the uh, mean or the rate parameter alone, we have to exponentiate, right? So we exponentiate both sides of the link function and we get that the mean lambda i is equal to the e raised to the linear predictor. And so we know with all or most statistical modeling, um, we can use the mean as a way of predicting some new value of the response. So we might use this as our predicted value and to do that we would plug in our estimates of our parameters and we would get an estimate of the mean which we can use as a, um, a forecast, right? A, a prediction for a new response. So the question here is how can we interpret the parameters of this model? and the interpretation for the, the parameters versus the estimates will be the same. So let's start with the intercept term. So we see based on this equation that if we take e raised to the beta naught, this term can be interpreted as the mean of the response when each predictor is set to zero, right? Take all of these, set them equal to zero, all of the x values are set equal to zero and you just have beta naught so e raised to the beta naught will just be the mean of the response uh, when the predictors are set to zero. Alright so what about taking one of the beta j terms for j 1 through p so set aside the intercept and let's just think about these slope terms. So if we take e raised to the beta j we can interpret that as the multiplicative increase in the mean of the response for a one unit increase in the corresponding predictor, holding all of the other predictors constant or adjusting for those other predictors. So let's see why this is true. Well, let's think about what the response might be if we add one unit to the jth predictor. So I'm going to use this plus one in the um, superscript, meaning that we're going to add one to the jth predictor. And that doesn't necessarily correspond to adding one to the response, so it's not just plus one. I'm using it as a piece of notation. And so we'd like to say that when we predict the next value, We'll predict it using uh, the mean, right? the predicted value of the mean. So I'll use the same notation. And based on the equation above, we'll have e raised to the beta naught hat plus beta one hat xi one plus and we'll go out to a jth term, so we'll have a beta j hat. And here I want to have an x i j, and then we're adding one to this. Right? So that's how we're getting the interpretation, is we're adding one to the jth predictor, and we're seeing what will happen to the response. And then we'll have some more terms, and we'll go all the way out to beta p hat x i p. All right, so we can do some simplification. One obvious thing that we can do is distribute this beta j hat through to each one of these terms. 
And then something else that we can do is notice that we have e raised to the sum. And so let's um, multiply the exponentials together instead of having them as one and adding in the exponent. So I'm doing two things at once here, and I'm just going to uh, commute. I'm just going to rearrange some terms. So I will take the e raised to the beta j hat. I'll put that out front. And we should just be left with e raised to the beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat xi1 plus, well, we'll have that beta j hat times xij. And then I've left out the beta j hat times 1. I've left that term out. I've put it to the front. And if we keep going up to beta p hat xip. And notice that this is just e to the beta j hat times our estimate of the mean of the ith response. Right, that just comes from up here. And that's interesting because we see that we see the result, right? We see that e raised to the beta j hat uh, is the multiplicative uh, increase or decrease, depending on what the value is, uh, over and above um, the the value of the ith response. So if we increase by one unit, we get this term that we're multiplying uh, the original mean of the response by. All right, so in the next lesson, we'll take a look at some data and we'll see how to interpret the parameters of the Poisson regression model for real R data, and we'll look at some other components of, uh, of analyzing Poisson data in R.